I'm Ben Jordan. I have many years in the EDA industry for PCB design. So previously at Altium, then Autodesk. Uh, I have my own consulting company and training company now, Jordan DSP LLC. How do PCB antennas work? They work exactly how high-speed digital tracers work when you don't want them to be <laughs> antennas and unintentionally uh, do things like crossing plane splits. No, really, I'm doing two classes at PCB West this year. One is on antennas, the other is on RF and microwave PCB design in general. PCB antennas allow you to move charge in certain shapes they could be as simple as a stick of wire off a board surface with a plane, or it could be a dipole and you're, you're putting high frequency uh, AC on that. But the point is, when you, when you have a, a movement of charge, that movement of charge gives rise to propagation. If you have a plane, a ground reference plane or a, a zero volt reference plane, right there with it, all that charge wants to stay attached to the plane, so it doesn't propagate out. And this is what we want in high-speed digital circuits. We don't want noise and EMI problems, but in a PCB antenna, you're actually intentionally radiating and receiving. And that, that's where you'll do things like deliberately go out away from the plane. You still have a reference plane but then you have an antenna element and it's sized for the, uh, for the f center frequency of operation. Everything. Antennas are used in almost everything from a cell phone. Of course, we, everything's wireless now and we don't need huge amounts of power necessarily, but we do need connectivity. Anywhere from near field communications, for which, which might be for scanning somebody's um, contact information from their phone to yours, uh, or, or access, wireless access to a door, all the way to um, you know, sparse wide area networks using LoRaWAN or various other technologies and protocols. But everyone agrees, pretty much everything is wireless now so it's it's necessary for pcb designers and engi engineers who previously perhaps just joined the dots and and maybe even learnt signal integrity for high-speed digital but many many people are now having to learn about rf microwave antennas so you need to not only design or choose the right antenna for the job maybe it's a 2.4 or 5 gigahertz ism band antenna for wi-fi or Bluetooth and you have to size it correctly to operate at the right frequencies and you have to match its impedance, you have to know how to measure its impedance of the prototype and match that to the, the circuitry that may be a low noise amplifier or a wireless microcontroller that has a built-in physical interface for, for wireless, how to match that with the right matching network and components. So. Number one, what's, what's your frequency range of, op like frequency, center frequency and bandwidth of operation, what power levels, um, and from there, what kind of sizing you're, you're going to need based on layer stack, and that's, that's an iterative process, because you may choose some materials and then realize a different material will be better. So a lot goes into it, and uh, from, from material choices for your board layer stack all the way up to how big does it have to be or how small does it have to be? What, what, what are your constraints for the design? So it all plays a role. Best practices for designing layer stacks for antenna boards. First of all, know that you, your whole board stack doesn't have to be the same material. You can use specialized materials and usually just on the surface layers. So if you have a mixed signal PCB, you may have some of it's digital and some of it has RF and analog. Um, the, the key there is choosing the right material but backing it with cores and prepregs 
that are um, more general purpose and, and, and strong as a backing. And so, and then it's about choosing, choosing thicknesses that will make the board manufacturing economical at the same time as giving you the necessary sizing of your microwave circuits um, based on the thickness available. Once you've dialed in a really good layer stack, and you should definitely consult your, your PCB fabricator um, for what they've done in the past and what they know works, uh, because they'll have some experience. Once you've dialed that in, reuse as much as you can for new designs. So patch antennas on a board, you, you, you're normally only going to have multiple patch antennas on a board for, for, for basically one reason, it's to get more power or more sensitivity. We put patch antennas into an array and those arrays are spaced at um, half or quarter wavelengths depending on the orientation and that allows the far field signals to add and increase signal strength in the direction that the patches are facing or increase sensitivity from that direction. There's two things that really are critical for mounting. One is the directionality of them. Again, almost all typical IoT applications use fairly omnidirectional antennas, but if they're, if they're over a regular part of the circuit that has plane layers, the plane's gonna suck the energy, basically draw the electromagnetic fields from the antenna, and they won't radiate properly, unless they're designed to, like a patch antenna, unless it uses the ground reference as part of, part of the means of propagation. Um, but if they're regular components, or if it's, um, if it's an inverted F antenna or a meandering antenna like many IoT designs use, it has to be mounted away from the plane but still have its reference plane. You always have a reference plane, but the, the radiation element is, is away from it so that it is actually going to propagate. It's, it's kind of the exact opposite of what you want with a high-speed digital trace. You want it as close to the plane as possible with no plane splits. Otherwise you get too much radiation and you have EMI failures. But in the case of an antenna, obviously you want it to propagate or receive signals. So positioning, the main thing about positioning is the plane. The other one is if you have diversity, you're going to want to mount antenna components at 90 degree angles to each other to um, improve reception over the entire sphere um, or you know, around the product, as it were, so. Um, the best materials are low-loss dielectrics, and it, again, it depends on the application. If, if you're doing a low-power, low-range ISM band application, like IoT, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, um, you can actually do that without using exotic materials. You can use regular FR4, it'll work just fine for that application. If you need to deal with higher power or go or, or longer range, you want, you want to consider loss. And that means you're going to go for materials uh, like your Rogers or other ceramic filled materials that have uh, on one hand, they have a much lower decay, so your sizes of your objects are going to be bigger for the same impedances, but they have far, far lower loss tangents, and that's going to make a big difference, especially with things like patch antennas and patch antenna arrays, if you want to get a lot of power out of those to, to go a distance, you need those materials. But again, you don't make the entire board layer stack out of those. You can use those in the surface layers where the antennas are, are created. Specific tools, obviously if you have budget for good EDA tools, you definitely need a really good simulation um, tool. Uh, ADS, Pathwave, um, ANSYS, HFSS, the, these are really flagship sort of Rolls-Royce tools. 
but they do make the job of designing RF and microwave elements for boards a lot faster because they allow you to model them and simulate how the waves are going to propagate and so on ahead of time. It saves you a lot of time. If you're on a tight budget, um, there's also some very good free tools. I like to use one called Cooks or QUCS, which is an open source based um, spice harmonic balance and um, and they've now included an FTDD solver in it as well for doing electromagnetic simulation. Um, it's not as easy to use, it's missing a few things, missing automation like a lot of open source tools. They're as good as the community is willing to put time and effort into developing, but it, it's better than nothing. And then of course, your main printed circuit board design package you need to get to know it really well, whatever tool you're using. I personally am experienced with Altium. Uh, I'm an Altium certified trainer, but I also um, have some experience with Eagle and Autodesk Fusion 360. And way, way back in the dark ages, Orcad. Um, all of these tools have evolved to facilitate RF and microwave board design for people who really need to do it. So they have specific features and capabilities like net ties. You need to learn that stuff, learn how the tool works to allow you to short bits of copper on the board, knowing that they, they actually provide a circuit function um, and, and they're not just treated as dead shorts, for example. That's just one example. But definitely learn your EDA tools. That will help a lot.